The coil in the figure below carries a current of uh, 2 amperes in the direction indicated. It is parallel to the XZ plane, has 3 turns, and an area of 4 times 10 to the negative 3rd meters squared, and lies in a uniform magnetic field of uh, these values right here in Billy Tesla's. Uh, what are the origin or the orientation energy of the coil in the magnetic field and the torque in unit vector notation on the coil due to the magnetic field? Now, for part A, uh, we'll have to you know a few equations, a few formulas that are given to us in the textbook. Now, for part A, which asks about the orientation energy of the coil, or rather the, the magnetic energy, because due to the magnetic field, uh, now, the magnetic energy, according to our formula in the textbook, or U, is equal to the negative uh, dot product between the magnetic dipole moment and the magnetic field. Now, we're given the magnetic field, so that's all fine and dandy, but we aren't given the magnetic dipole moment by the question. Now, the textbook also gives us a formula for this. And the magnetic dipole moment is equal to, or the magnitude of the magnetic dipole moment, is equal to the number of turns in the coil multiplied by the current flowing through the coil multiplied by the area enclosed by a turn of the coil. Now, all this accounts for the magnitude of the dipole moment, but keep in mind that uh, the dipole moment is still a vector, and we need to take the fact that it's a vector into account, especially if we're trying to do a dot product here. So in order to find a proper answer for the vector of the dipole moment, we'll have to consider the direction in which this dipole moment is pointing as well. Now, there is a right-handed rule for dipole moment, like there is for many things in physics. And the right-handed rule for dipole moment is uh, if you take your right hand and uh, put your hand, put your right hand in like a gripping sort of shape, such that the tips of your fingers are wrapped around through the direction of the current, then your thumb will point in the direction of the dipole moment. So fortunately, we're given a picture, so it's really easy to visualize. And uh, try it right now, actually. See, take your right hand and hold your right hand so that your fingertips point uh, in, in somewhat in somewhat of a clockwise motion to our viewpoint. Anyway, give it considering what we have, and hold your hand in a way so that your fingers would curl around uh, the X Z plane shown here in the direction of the little arrow. And if you stick your thumb out then you will see that your thumb is pointing down, if you are doing it correctly. So it's pointing down, meaning that the dipole moment points in the negative y direction. Or if we're dealing with unit vectors here, I'm going to call that negative uh, j hat. Now let's plug in the values we have, and the whole thing is going to be negative, uh, to get our, uh, our dipole moment. So I'm making the whole thing negative so that I could just write a simple J at the end. And so according to the problem, it's going through three turns. The current running through it is uh, two amperes. Wow, yikes, that, uh, that two there. And the area of uh, the area enclosed by the circle is four times 10 to the negative third of meters squared. And plugging all this to our calculators, of course, we get a value. Oh, and uh, don't forget, don't forget to take into account the unit vectors. That is very important. And the answer that I get for this is point uh, zero two four zero ampere meters squared. And all this is a vector in the j direction. Now to actually find our uh, our magnetic energy. Let's plug this into our formula. So as shown above, uh, let's just plug these values in. And it's going to be negative. So don't forget to include a negative outside the negative already part of our value for the dipole moment. So I'm going to have another uh, negative inside here for point, a negative point. 0, 2, 4 of ampere uh, squared meters 
times the um, times the the magnetic field. Now, which one of these components do we use? Now, remember, a dot product is uh, a multiplication of the parallel components. It's a measure. It's a multiplication of the components of the two vectors that are parallel to one another. So because our magnetic dipole moment is in the J direction, let's use the J component of the, elect of the magnetic field as well. So that's going to be a negative um, 3.0 teslas, or rather negative 3.0 uh, milliteslas. So I'm going to include the negative 3 here so I can keep it in the base unit. And this gives us an energy of negative 7.20 times 10 to the negative fifths in joules. All right, so that is our answer for part A. Now, uh, part B, and what does part B ask again? Part B asks uh, for the torque in unit vector notation on the coil due to the magnetic field. Now, keep in mind, while the magnetic energy is the dot product between the negative of the dipole moment and the electric field, the torque is equal to the cross product of the same two dimensions, only without the negative. So that means that the torque uh, due to uh, the magnetic field is going to be equal to the dipole moment cross the electric field both being vectors, as shown there. Now, there are many, many ways to calculate a cross product. So you can obviously just use whatever method works best for you. If you do not know how to uh, calculate a cross product, if you don't know any methods for it, or if it's something that you struggle with and have trouble with, then in the description of this video, I will be including a link to a really good video I found by some great, very smart man. Uh, walk very quickly, it's only a two minute video, explaining a very, very easy and reliable way to calculate the cross product. So you can use that if uh, you're not sure of how to calculate a cross product. And uh, I will not be illustrating that here, however, because as easy as that method is to use, it unfortunately requires quite a bit of writing and with my mouse uh, Microsoft Paint handwriting here, it would take way too long. So I will just be uh, writing it, writing out my cross product calculation in the quote normal unquote method or the the hard way you could call it. Uh, but again, you could pretty much use your whatever your preferred method of calculating the cross product is. And so to for me calculating this cross product, I'm going to. Uh, according to the question, we're looking for it in unit vector notation. So we want each uh, unit vector component in I, J, and K. So for the I, of course, that's going to be the X component, or wait, not the X component. It's going to be everything but the X component for I. So it's going to be the Y component of the magnetic dipole times the Z component of uh, the electric field. So it's going to begin with, yeah, it's magnetic uh, component magnetic dipole in the y direction times electric field in the z direction in terms of the magnitudes and that is going to be the i and for the j uh, component now because our um, magnetic dipole moment is in the j direction and that it, and the j direction is the only component in fact of the magnetic dipole there is going to be no component in the J direction for the torque, because as you should know, if you understand cross products, uh, it, uh, the cross products only take into account parallel components, or perpendicular components rather. So there will be no component in the J direction uh, for this cross product. So we can ignore the J vector. So now all that's left is K. Now, because according to our magnetic field components, the K component is negative anyway, I'm going to write it out negatively, which will make that backwards. So uh, that instead of doing uh, the k, instead of doing the x component of the magnetic dipole times the y component of the electric field, I'm going to do it backwards, where it's the y component of the magnetic dipole times the x component of the electric field, 
and that is for the k vector. And now we just plug in our values. And once again, if you do not know what I just did there, it doesn't, don't worry about it. Don't get too flustered about that. That's just, that's just one way to calculate a cross product. But once you get this, then I'm just going to sub in my values for this. So uh, the y component for the, uh, the magnetic dipole, it, it's just the same. That's just the actual magnetic dipole moment, since that since the y component is the only component of the magnetic dipole. So you just plug in that value, make sure it's negative for each part here. And then for the z component and the x components of the electric field, once again, you just plug in the values they give it you for the x component and the z component, respectively. And when we do these calculations and write it out, subbing these values in, uh, and leaving the unit vectors the way they are, then the answer I would get for this is going to be 9.6 times uh, 10 to the negative fifth Newton meters. And that is the vector in the I direction, plus uh, 4.8 times 10 to the negative fifth of newton meters in the k direction. And in unit vector notation, which is how I kept it, this is what our vector for the torque is going to be due to the, uh, the magnetic field.